Hey, 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 people. What's up? What's up? I know it's been a little bit. I had to take a break, but I'm back. I'm back with the jump off. And if you're too young, you don't even know where I got that from. But it doesn't even matter. All right. So jumping back into this thing, I just want to say to everyone that kind of took a break with me there, I appreciate you all taking that time alone or the time to sort of check out other podcasts and, you know, just whatever it is you did while I was gone, because I know you, you probably weren't entertained much. But what I did while I was gone, okay, I actually found an entirely new podcast to listen to because I get tired of listening to myself. And, oh, trust me, I do listen to myself. And as you know, I'm t Ron, and this is another episode of the Ubiquitous Box podcast. But the other podcast I was talking to you about, right? Right. Check it, check it, check it. So I started listening to this podcast, and I thought, I got to reach out to them. I got to I gotta bring them on. So we're kicking back on here, and I've brought on both Tierra and Tisha, and they are the host of the Coping With It podcast, which I highly recommend. Tierra, Tisha, you there? Hey, I'm here. Tisha, you here? I'm here. Thank you so much for the shout out. Yeah, we are part of the Coping With It podcast. It's a newer podcast out there, but we are steady with the releases. So please check us out. Um, Tierra. You got anything to say? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll just go ahead and Second intro myself. It's all good. I'll go ahead and introduce myself. As they have said, I am Tierra Janae, and I am one of the hosts of the Coping With It podcast, half of the show, and then my host, Tisha, my co-host, Tisha. Yeah, I'm the other half. So it's <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Yeah, hey, everybody. Hey, you for this Black How's everybody out there? I hope y'all are doing well, enjoying your break, enjoying the weather, you know? We're here. And all that stuff. Now, yeah. I will say, you said that you are like, you know, steady with the releases. Consistency is key. And uh, I will say you all have been steady with the releases. Because sometimes there's times where I just be like having stuff to do. <laughs> like you, might, you might get a weekend where I just don't do it. I just don't want to do it. But, but, but I, I make sure to, you know, round it back out and come back with something special. Um, if you could... How did the um, Coping With It podcast come along and sort of what's the idea? We're like, what do you all sort of talk about over there? Wow. Okay. So I'm going to start to tear, obviously jump in because that's what we do. But um, so it it originally started because we'll go into how we met in a little bit, but Tier and I used to work together and we always talked about doing podcasts like all the time because um, she actually introduced me for the most part to like the read and the friend zone and all those like big popular podcasts. Mm-hmm. And so like, we kept talking about how we should, we can do this. Like we should do this. Like we have stuff to talk about, but we also said like, what's the point? Everybody else is doing it. So we just kind of like lag behind. And then one day we just kind of looked at each other and we we're like, what are we doing with our lives? Nothing. So why not? And that's how we got started. Yeah, I mean, basically that, you know, we have known each other for probably about five years or so now, and we always had interesting conversations. Other people would listen to our conversations and laugh and be like, wow, you guys have really different pr- perspectives, but you guys also agree on a lot. And people would always be like, this would be funny as a podcast. So, you know, life went on and we kept saying, we should do it. We should do it. Never did it. Here comes 2020, the year of WTF, and it's just like, you know what, Tisha, we gotta do this. I mean, literally that. And we started to talk about concepts and like the different things that we're interested in. We're both like conspiracy theories, we both like true crime, but we are also very big on like Black women and us getting through it. And we like plants and we're big on healthy living. So, so many things. We're like, what can this show be about? And we landed on coping with it. So, really, our show is for people who are looking for different ways to cope. We are not therapists. Let me go ahead and say that right here, right nope. now. So let's be clear. We're not therapists. But we just want to share some of our ways of coping with it. Some different ways that we like to dive into different things. We go down rabbit holes on the internet. We talk about music, food, all kinds of things. So that's what we do over at Coping With It. Yeah, yeah. And see, and see, I'll be listening. And I and I know Tierra more so than I do Tisha. I'm getting to know Tisha. But because I know, like, I just... 
because I want to dial it back because you kind of were giving the gist of what you were talking about. But there was something that stood out to me and you were like, so, yeah, so we talk about like healthy living, et cetera, et cetera. Don't you know, Tisha, you don't I don't know if you know this. Don't you know the other day, <laughs> the other day, Tierra texts me and I kind of just casually, you know, making conversation throughout the week because, you know, you just don't have really anything to talk about because what's going on in 2020, right? <laughs> but Tierra texts me and she told me, I asked her, I was like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, and she says, I'm making cauliflower wings. <laughs> Is that the kind of thing you all talk about on cauliflower wings? Because because I, you know I feel like that's an oxymoron. I feel like that don't even go, go together. Okay, okay. So first of all, that's Tierra's habit and eating style and her healthy lifestyle. We don't necessarily talk about it, but thank you for the recommendation. I like yeah, the yeah. recipe, but um. No, I mean, yes, we can. We haven't really talked about an episode of, like, healthy foods and recipes that we like yet. But those are the kind of topics we just kind of go, like, talk about how we're coping with it. So, like, one episode we can say, like, hey, what do you, how are you coping with it this week? Food. And then Tierra could, like, list her cauliflower weeds. And then we can throw the shade about how it's not wings. It's technically it's not. It's vegetables. It's, but, it's know, just cauliflower yep. with sauce on it. Yep. Okay, so what should I have called it? Sauced cauliflower? Would that make y'all feel better? Buffalo you, you cauliflower. Should, yeah, yeah, like cauliflower balls. Okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Noted. I'll take the recommendation. I just, I just, I didn't, want, I didn't mean to put you on blast, but that was still bothering me. And I just, <laughs> you, you said healthy is, living. You know what's funny? It, it kind of just fucked me up a little bit. So my response <laughs> to that message when I said making cauliflower wings and sweet potato fries, he didn't respond. So then I responded and said, I don't want to hear nothing about how cauliflower is not wings. And then here we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna find a way. I was gonna find a way to get it in. She she actually precursored before good. I even could reply. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear anything about it now. Mm-hmm. But you I know had to. You know like, I, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I had to. <laughs> Speaking of knowing people, um, and you all doing this podcast together, which again, I'm just enjoying every week. Um, how did you all like meet? How did it? How did? What's the early days of like? Tisha and Tierra, like, how did you all? I know you said you worked together. What did you all work at? Well, we're not going to say that where we worked. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I okay. Really if, did you, it. It if you could, uh, if you could describe <laughs> where you worked at, so we worked for a media company, but we worked in more of a corporate setting, so not in the creative side, the fun side, the side that like we're on now with podcasts, much more of the like corporate end of it. So we met that way. She worked at a different office than I did and she got promoted and she moved to the office where I was. And I remember another guy friend of ours was like, at the time he was like, oh, it's about to be Chocolate City up in here. Now, mind you, the only (laughs) black people were me and him. And I said, it is not about to be Chocolate City up in here. It's going to be me, you and her. It is not Chocolate City. (laughs) If it's Chocolate, if it was Chocolate City there and then you were there, Tierra, it was like Chocolate chocolate with like white chocolate chips you know, city, you know what I mean this is why I don't like you exactly <laughs> anyway but yeah that's basically how we met in a work setting you know the three of us held it down for the black people Tisha was there one one other person that was black I can't Jamal remember. Jamal but his name wasn't Jamal we're gonna bleep that out we don't want you <laughs> so his name his name was not Jamal no. Okay, we're calling him Jamal. I got yeah, it. we called him Jamal because like we would see him in the elevator and be like, "Oh, there goes Jamal." But see, Jamal wasn't like, you know how we do the head nod or the smile, or you know, we know I see you, you see me. Jamal wasn't on that. So yeah, I remember. I remember one time I was telling because this is why we came up with the name Jamal. I was like telling Tier, I was like, "Yo, I just like head nod him in the elevator. He looked away." <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, 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 okay, okay, okay. Hold on, pause real quick because <laughs> for for those of you who don't understand, is that there's this there's this thing just like growing up black. There are these gestures that you kind of learn, and the head nod 
is is one of them, right? So <laughs> the head nod, I because I can visualize it right when you say, it, but some people may not. So we kind of break it down to them. But so there's 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 several different head nods. Like there's different head nods that mean different shit. And DC, you'll have to set kind of let us know which one you gave him that made him turn away. <laughs> but, but there's the head. Okay, so there's the um there's a street nod where it's not exactly a nod. It's more so um exposing your neck and clicking your chin up. It's more so, more territorial. So that's more of a like a sup sup right right. It it don't mean like hi, nice to meet you or anything. It means like sup i see you i don't want no problems kind of shit right so there's that then there's the downward knot where you really just kind of tilt your tilt your invisible hat if you will to someone that's more of a kind gesture it's like and then there's like nods with different facial expressions but you get the idea teacher which nod did you give this dude that made jamal turn away like what the fuck did you do <laughs> I mean, I would say it's the it's the in between of the first and the second. Like I was just doing a kind gesture, but just let him know, like, hey, I see you. What's up? We were both going up to, you know, the floors that we work on, and he literally just turned his head and didn't acknowledge me. So I felt some type of way because I was like, I mean, I understand we're not coworkers, coworkers because we don't work together. But like, I black, you black. We're like four black people here. So like, can we not just say hello? But whatever. If 2020 so, has revealed anything, it's that it reiterated that all skin folk ain't kin folk because you well, got some baby. of your cousin them out here. Baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, we know that. Gosh. Well, t right I know, I know your show is international. So do you want to explain? So like we were explaining, like we were saying, his name isn't mm-hmm. Jamal. We just named him Jamal. So do yes. you want to give a little context as to why we might have been using the name Jamal? Now that 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 one's gonna that might throw me a little bit because okay. I don't know you, you might have to you might have to school me on that I but I'm gonna it. guess you I'm guess. gonna guess that the Jamal would mean okay so Jamal is like a um like a like a pretty black dude name right yes, yes. would you say yeah so yeah. so calling him Jamal is in fact calling him the very opposite of probably how he behaved. So he was probably behaving like a Brad, it sounds like. <laughs> so just because you acting like a Brad, then we're going to call you Jamal. Is that, was that, the, is that the idea? Absolutely. Did I get that? Yes. Come on, context clues. That's absolutely it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, yes, that and the fact that I didn't know his name. And that was the whole uh, jump around okay. that as well. Well, Tisha, maybe that's what happened. Maybe no. maybe when you went in the elevator, he was like, sup, Jamal. And no. he nodded. And he was like, no. And he looked away like, that's not my name. <laughs> so first of all, I don't talk to people. So that's obviously not what happened. I literally just <laughs> nodded at him. He pretended he didn't know me. And I forgot what his name was. So, so when I was trying to tell Tierra, I was telling like her and you know our coworker the story. And I was like, I, I don't remember his name, but he's like Jamal or whatever. I don't know his name. And so <laughs> that's how like the joke of Jamal came up. Like we didn't See. really know his name. I didn't care to know his name. And he was nobody to me after that interaction. <laughs> so he and was the Jamal. Guy is, for the longest, I forgot that like, I remember the story, but I forgot that she had kind of just thrown out the name Jamal, right? So for forever, when I would see him, I'd be like, oh, there goes Jamal. Like, I seen Jamal. And like, at one point, teacher was like, you know, his name is not Jamal. And I'm like, oh, no, I thought, I didn't know. I thought his name was Jamal. I just assumed it was Jamal because again, Black American name, let's just roll with it. Works for me. It'd be like, well, it's a white man named Bob. I was just like, oh, that's Bob. Well, yeah, it was funny because our, like, our white coworkers were like, you guys, his name is not Jamal. And we were like, oh. <laughs> I too forgot that his name wasn't Jamal because I just made his name up in like a fit, but um, we just kind of went with it, which is hindsight 2020. I realized that's kind of disrespectful, but yeah, that's rude. That's rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll admit that I'll take the L for that one, but I still think he should have nodded back at me. So, well, I'm, amen. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna let that go. So, so speaking of nodding back in the workplace and you all um, sort of working in this like corporate setting, I know you mentioned like there were like very few black people in that setting. 
how did y'all black asses get in that setting? <laughs> like, how, or better yet, I guess a better question would be, what do you think it, because Jamal would have had reason or he would have, you know, it felt like he needed to not nod back, right? Because corporate America um, kind of gives a different, like, vibe rather than just working class America, right? So do you think like that kind of played a part, like being black in that setting where he was just like, I don't know you. <laughs> do you think that um, a part of the context or being in corporate America, just, I know, I know it just kind of like changes people a little bit. Talk about that. Being um, black women in, in a corporate setting, if you will. I mean, I will say I've had instances um, in corporate America where there has been some type of weird competition that I didn't know about. <laughs> I'm up here thinking I'm just black and we black together. And apparently we are in a, a race, but, um, and which is funny because I think Tara, I told you the story, but if you forgot, sorry. But like when I first <laughs> came to corporate, I thought like, Oh my gosh, I'm up here. Like, cause I'm not used to really working with other black people at this stage in my career. Um, and the ones that I did work with, it was kind of like a competition. So I was like, really, I wanted to be Tierra's friend, but I was also concerned that she didn't like me because I was black. <laughs> so that went away real quick once I got to like understand her and know who she was. But like when we first started working, I was like, I hope she's not like a Jamal. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really do. But um, yeah, no, yeah. I remember that story. And I, as a light skinned person, which y'all called me out already on that. It's cool. I didn't call you. Out <laughs> okay. t Ryan called me out on that, but it's cool. I, I did. did. It. It's cool. But yeah, you know, as a light skinned person, I am used to that in not even just a corporate setting, but literally every setting of my life, people meet me and they assume like, oh, she's, she's going to be up in a year. She's going to be this, or she thinks she that, or da, 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 cause she light skinned. And I'm like, I have known you for 45 seconds. Like, whatever so I'm used to that so yes I remember that story Tisha and it doesn't bother me it used to bother me but it doesn't um but yeah I also experienced that in a corporate setting um but in a bit of a different way more of like yes there's this random competition that I didn't even know we were having but like the other person is feeling some type of way thinking that I'm trying to be you know on top or number one or the token because I'm light-skinned meanwhile I'm just here to get this check and go home like I'm not here <laughs> for any of those things exactly but, yeah, but the misperception of me just based on the way that I look is people always assume that. And it's just, it's unfortunate and it sucks. And that's why I want to get out of corporate. But that's a but, whole other thing. But, but you, know. you know, it 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 gets deeper than that. Like that, um, that unspoken competition is, is, it's, it's a real thing. And it's, it happens in, you know, multiple settings. But I think you probably notice it more in various corporate settings because there are so few Black people that that um sort of like subconscious mentality that we're raised with as a result of how we're brought up or things that we're born into um you you honestly end up with this mindset where you kind of live your life in a defensive stance and you feel like there's not enough to go around so it makes you you know work like that it makes you exist in that way so when you see somebody that looks like you even slightly like, we ain't got to be the same complexion. We ain't got to be the same gender. But the fact that your hair texture is similar to mine, we <laughs> we we might have some issues because the truth, the truth of the matter is there are these moments where you feel like there isn't enough to go around or, you know, since we're all black, we're all a reflection of each other. So we all got to go real hard. And so everybody's do doing that. And as a result, sort of outshining each other. I think that's kind of what you what you all sort of described in that setting, more or less. I think you hit the nail absolutely on the head. And it's very much that crabs in a barrel mentality. And Tisha and I have this running like joke, not joke, but joke that we always say, like, it goes back to slavery. Like everything we say, we're like, oh, it goes back to slavery because it really does. It's unfortunate, it but it's the root of it. And that crabs in the barrel, you know, house, Negro, all that stuff, like it really is still there. And it's so unfortunate that that is ingrained in our society, but like also our culture, you know, Black American culture is so ingrained there that it's like, it's hard to shake. And I think that people right. do it and don't realize that they're doing it or they have these um, preconceived notions that they don't realize that they have because it's so ingrained in the fabric. 
Where where did you um where did you all I guess um I'll start with you, Tisha. Where did you um sort of grow up and how do you think that played into helping to carve that sort of mindset, whether consciously, you know, or subconsciously, because you know, of course now as an adult you unlearn things and you know, you try to apply new things. So you're aware of it now. But where are you from or where did you grow up and what was that like and how do you think that played in? That's a lot in that's a hell of a question. How do you think that played into, you know, you going into a corporate setting and seeing someone like Tierra and be like, hold up, like we might be competition, but I want to say hi, but we might be, this might be a problem. Well, I mean, I will say I didn't go in that situation thinking we were competition. I was just hoping that she didn't think that we were competition. Clarity. Um, yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there. I was not threatened by Tyria whatsoever. I just wanted to make sure okay. I, that she would be. Okay, because she ain't nobody. No, I just, <laughs> in the sense that I wanted to be her friend, but I was hoping that she didn't think I was like competition so we could be friends and not enemies. But, um, but yeah, so that's a loaded question. Um, so let me tell you about my memoir. Uh, I grew up. Come on. Actually, like, I was born in. Um, I was actually born in New York. So I was born in Long Island, New York. And what people would consider, like, I guess the projects. So I grew up around literally 99% of the people that I was around were black. Like, I used to tell the story to, like, so many people that I didn't really meet a white person until I moved to the South. I didn't, I'd never interacted with really white people at all. So that's Mm -hmm. how, like, drastic my, um, situation was when I moved. So I moved to the South, uh, South Carolina when I was seven. And it was like a culture shock for me. Cause like, here I am surrounded by black people. The only other people that I met were like Puerto Ricans and no offense to my Puerto Rican friends out there, but like, it was, a uh, that's where the competition was. For some reason we fought, I don't know what it was, but they, we didn't really like each other. Like the Puerto Rican people that I went to school with in myself, not, nowadays but just when i was growing up it was very hard i don't know why but um so that was like the only competition that i really had and then once i moved to south carolina like i was suddenly like the only black kid in my class and the black people that i did interact with they had this like weird mentality where it was like like tira was talking about earlier like crabs in a barrel like we weren't it was just hard to it was for me it was harder to make friends with black kids than it was white kids like in the South. And I don't think everyone growing up in the South has had my experience, but just my culture shock and being new and not having family, not having that connection in the South. I Mm kind of went through that transition where I'm like, Oh wow. Like we both are black and you don't want to be my friend because what I'm different. Like, I don't know. It was just really weird for me. So I had to like question my, identity because I grew up in a house that was very pro-black very like love yourself like your dark skin is beautiful like I never like doubted my skin color because I'm for you listeners out there I'm dark skin I'm considered dark skin black girl but uh um, yeah you got you got to paint the picture because yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like I'm a dark skin black girl you know so um in the south obviously that is not necessarily like the picture girl when I was growing up, because I grew up like I'm not going to date myself, but I didn't grow up in Black Girl Magic era. So it was a, it was a different type of experience. Like black dark skinned girls weren't treated as well as, you know, lighter skinned dark girl. I mean, black girls. So um, I will say that because of that. Like, I would always be, like, pro-Black. Like, we are all Black. It doesn't matter. But a lot of people would say, like, oh, you know, I want to marry someone lighter than me because I don't want no dark-skinned babies or stuff like that. I would hear conversations about that all the time. Those were real conversations. Yeah. Those were real conversations, yeah. And for Yeah, for me, like, especially growing up in the household that I did that was very pro-Black and me being in, you know, New York... And in the projects where I see all types of black people that look like me and that was never, and I also was younger. So I guess I also didn't deal with that, that colorism, I would say at an older age in New York. So I'm pretty sure it was there too, but it just wasn't as drastic to me as it was when I was in the South. So from that experience, I realized like, oh, there's like a difference. Like it became a competition 
especially me being like one of the only black kids in my classes because I took a lot of like I wouldn't say honor but like upper <laughs> not I don't know not regular classes I took AP honor sometimes like and so there yeah, wasn't a lot take, of black when you yeah. take too many advanced classes in school especially what back in the day then you were automatically other you were automatically different especially if you'd like the dark-skinned girl that's like overachieving mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't or, have time for you that or you, or you talk like or you talk like this you talk not like with any type of something that's why i said a minute ago i was like yeah you gotta probably gotta paint the picture for people because you know you don't sound like what yeah. you expect a dark girl to sound like. guys i am like thoroughly black i'm so sorry but I, that's just my voice <laughs> Could you blacken it up a little bit more for this I podcast, love this. please? I love how we can have this conversation. I love this. Well, that, that was one of the things, too. I used to get made fun of of my, like, the way that I talk. Because, A, I came from New York and I had, like, this New York <laughs> accent. So it's not heavy now because it's thinned out since, you know, my childhood. But when I came to the South, I was, like, coffee, like, water. Like, I was... You still say water. You still say water. Yeah. You still say water, though. You always say that. I do say water. Because it's water. Like, whatever. But, like, so I... It's so funny. (laughs) It's so funny, though, because speaking of accents, like, for years, for years, and I mean, like, I don't know how long it's been, but I know in Tierra for, like, probably a good 10. Close. Yeah, probably a good 10. But she's always been, like, Say that again. Like every now and then there's a word that she just gets a tickle out of. I'm like, you live up the street from me, nigga. Like we sound very much alike. Like <laughs> say Wapa again. Like, girl, come on, man. Whatever. <laughs> oh god. What about you? What about you, Tierra? What was it? What was it like um for you growing up being on the opposite? Well, <laughs> I want to be on the opposite end of the spectrum because that's way opposite. But what, what was it like for you growing up um, as a um, a more fluorescent beige? Okay, you know, you know, you know, you know, I love you. You were lucky. I love you. Uh huh. Go ahead. Ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? What was it like for you though? Because because you you know growing up in the growing up in well, I'm assuming that we all really grew up in the 90s, right? Yeah, baby. Unless, I, unless y'all know something I don't. Uh, but, I um, grew up in 2010, so whatever. <laughs> the devil is alive. The devil is alive. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, um, you know, growing up in the in those times, we were just, you know, the things that we were coming off of, you know, there was still very much like um, colorism that happened. So there was still a time where the girl on the Just For Me box was more so the shade. <laughs> you know what? You think that needs to be asked. Right? 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 <laughs> so, 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 you know, you, 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 um, you, people would assume that you, um, have this, uh, moment of, like, you have more favor, if you will, right? But I don't think that's the case. I have a, my, my brother is completely, um, fluorescent as well. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, he, his more his experience, and you could probably um, relate to this. His experience was more so growing up being called um, was a white boy, right, or it, whatever it is. But he, you know, he's he's just bright. Tierra, what was it like for you on the opposite end there? How did you cope with it? See, how I did that. See, how I did that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was whack. I'm not gonna lie, it was whack. Um, my childhood was great, but being at school and being with other kids that I was not related to was whack. I was bullied quite a bit by girls specifically. Um, they didn't want to be my friend. They would tell me that my hair was fake. They would pull my hair. They would ask me if my dad was white, if I was mixed. And I actually, there's a particular time in my life that I actually remember. I might've been like maybe five or six. I went home to my grandmother. I will never forget this. And I asked her, I said, why do people a- keep asking me, am I mixed? My grandmother, obviously an older Black woman, she done been through it. And she's also she also knows her grandchild is light-skinned with freckles. Like, she know what time it is. She knew that I was going to experience this in school. So she's, like, hot. She is hot, hot. She's like, don't let anybody ever tell you you mixed. You are not mixed. And she explained to me what mixed meant, because I didn't know I'm a kid. 
And she's like, don't, don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not black. You are black. Like, don't ever question that. Don't ever, like, feel any type of way. You may not look like other a lot of other black people, but you are black. Like, there's no question. And it's interesting because I have a ton of siblings. And in my household, everybody was black. My mom was brown skinned. You know, she's got black hair. My father's bright. Like, everybody, I'm the only one who is fluorescent, as y'all say. Yeah, no, y'all you, can't, you, you dropped into the family just brighten things up, right? <laughs> 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 But look at God. You see how God be working? <laughs> but no, like, so I grew up around that blackness. So I never questioned blackness. I didn't know anything but blackness until I, you know, I went to school and people try to instill in me or say to me that I was something different. So I had a really, really, really tough time in elementary school. I mean, I remember like I was crying every day. Kids would make fun of me. Like I just, nobody wanted to play with me on the play playground like I was that kid like I was just and then I look back at pictures of myself now and I'm like I was the freaking the cutest freaking kid ever like whatever but I had a really hard time and then when I got to like middle school uh high school I started to kind of find a group of friends and a group of black girls you know who were like accepting of me and who treated me just like they treated their other black girlfriends and I love that because I had never really experienced that all my black friends were just like you know, people from church or whatever, but like, I never experienced that at school or like in the neighborhood. So when I got older, I started to have my little crew of friends and it was like, they never questioned my blackness, never questioned who I was. And yeah, we had like light skin jokes and this and that. And it was cool. Cause it was like, you joking on me, but I'm a part of the crew. So it's fine. You know? And it, I really, yeah, cause I'm a roast your ass bag. All yeah. the time. Because by that point, <laughs> I heard all the light skin jokes, right? <laughs> so like, Let's go at any moment. Let's go. But like, I never, never, ever, ever, ever questioned my blackness. And we talked about blackness in the household all the time. My grandparents, I'm lucky enough to be the one who was raised with grandparents. So like their perspective of blackness is so different than what we were seeing in the nineties. You know, we, we were, you know, we were going to school with white kids and we were going to school with, right. I, I, you know what I'm saying? So like, I you know what you said, um, okay. not to cut you off, but you said oh, something okay. um, that Tisha said too. And um, that was that, you know, in growing up, you all have these recollections of, you know, black blackness being spoken of or blackness being acknowledged in a way that was positive. You know, mm -hmm. um, let me ask you all this and you all can, t can tell me if this is something that you all um, experience as well. Um, growing up, did you ever... <laughs> You know what? Why are you wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you better host this show, t Ron. <laughs> Growing up, did you ever um, experience this particular, this, I guess you now you would call it a mantra, if you will, but did you ever experience this moment where it's like, <laughs> I'm black. And I'm proud to say but, that. I'm, but, <laughs> but my great grandmother was Indian. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, you know what? And that is what I was talking about. Like when I grew up in the South. <laughs> but wait, here's the gag though. My great grandfather really was. Like that's the gag. Like, See, you know, like I have pictures with well, I don't have pictures. Let me stop learning. My grandmother has pictures <laughs> proof. I don't. She do. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I will say that my great great grandfather was irish like legit an irish man which i like I, you look at me you can't tell and but you could tell because i don't have a butt like <laughs> oh shit now here's the thing <laughs> whoa see here's the thing you you don't you see here's the thing with with the audio medium you get to paint the picture for people. You could have said that you had the biggest ass you ever. Sure could, baby. I do, but you know what? You guys, you didn't listen to me. Let me finish. You didn't let me finish. 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 I'm a petite build, okay? So you got to listen to me. I don't have like a stack butt, like, but I have a little, you know, a little thing going on. But it's not like, yeah, it's not like, you know, Meg Thee Stallion, Nicki Minaj. Like, I don't have a butt, but, but. I have something going on. It's because we threw, it's because we grew up in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. So, let yeah, because 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 honestly, there was there was that time in um in history where like people were trying to have like smaller butts. You know, Absolutely. that was like a whole yeah. thing. And yeah. nowadays, people are like obsessed. Because I remember, yeah. like, I feel like growing up in the nineties and the um like uh like the Pam Anderson era, era if you will. 
we're like breasts with like the whole thing. Like that was like, right? That was like the whole movement. And then people was like, they moved. They was like, fuck those lumps. These lumps, right? Yeah. And they moved on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I remember when like J-Lo was like popping, popping, like first popping and like when Beyonce was still Destiny's Child and was like popping, popping, people would call them fat and like talk about their bodies. And like us, us yeah. the black folks, we like fat, what? It was like, <laughs> what? And like, I remember mainstream media being like, they're just so big. And then J-Lo like had a clothing line and she was like, I make clothes for curvy girls. And was, but she really didn't. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where, where that yeah. even like But she started. doesn't. Yeah. That so, was the- so, so, listen, so listeners, my butt is like equivalent to J-Lo's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, yeah, yeah. You gotta speak that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, affirmation. <laughs> 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 I, I, I can't. I, I we just gonna have to take your word for it. You know what, mm-hmm. what it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you sure are. Why is it trying to stalk me online? Right. Right. Let, let's go see exactly how big her butt is. <laughs> they, they go on your page and all your pictures are just like forward facing. Like. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you know they say they say if, if you if you got a big old butt, if you face him forward, you can still see it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. next topic. <laughs> let's, let's continue this conversation. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going on mute. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have, I have to. to. <laughs> you gotta continue your show. I'm going on mute. <laughs> oh shit! Now. Oh, wow. Okay. I anticipated this, you know. I anticipate this foolishness. Mm-hmm. We, we, we've been kind of weaving in and out, but it, it's all, it's there. You can, you, you know what I mean? You can feel it. Like, it's, the, it's, the bullshit is, is there. <laughs> Wait, I said the content. You said the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, same thing, same thing, same, same thing. thing. Same thing. <laughs> Let me ask you. Oh, gosh. I got to get out of this somehow. <laughs> <laughs> got to get out of this shit so out. Okay. Switching gears. I want to talk about I want to talk about some of the things that you think would be needed um as we go into this election. I don't really don't want to fucking go here but we will. Oh, as we go into this election. Oh, okay. How do you think we are um expected to cope with the way things are going because I was like, and now you got to be careful with the internet too, with, especially with Facebook. I don't even know why I'm still over there, but I'm there. Yeah, um, we are in the same place. I don't know. Why I don't know why I'm there. there, but um, you know, you get these articles and stuff, and you know, these fucking like spoof pages. But there's like all these reports of people um tampering with like mail in voting and all this. You all seeing this? Mm-hmm. There's that, and then there's your cousin um Ice Cube with his mm. platinum plan for Black That's America, your cousin, right? That's your baby. Cousin, right? That's your cousin. <laughs> the, uh, again, we don't know him. Again, the ice cube is the ice cube is indeed melting because of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. He's just um, a cube. He's a cube. <laughs> we don't know her. <laughs> Next. But you know, it, it's just it's just a lot, a lot of a lot to take in. And this is the craziest. I, I think I felt more inclined to vote this year. Even then, when um, Obama was running, that was like when I was first able to vote, you know. So that was like a whole thing. But I okay, feel like, Jack. you know, I, <laughs> I feel like I really need to fucking, you know, get out there now because this is ridiculous. This is yeah. crazy. How 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 would you uh, cope with all that's going on in terms of, you know, trying to get to the polls and making sure that you know everybody gets their voice heard and hopefully. You know, we get some shit cleaned up because. Huh? Oh wait, and one more thing before y'all start answering. Mm-hmm. So when I w- I was doing my um my um absentee ballot, so I was bubbling and everything. Mm-hmm. Y'all know Kanye West is on the ballot for this state. Right? Is he really on the ballot? Is he? Well, I haven't opened my ballot yet, to be honest. I don't know. He he made some states. It's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Ooh, okay. And you okay. got some of your cousins now. Um, actually, actually bubbling 
in for Kanye. I mean, that's stupid. They did that last time when they was bubbling, typing in Harambe or writing in Harambe, and it's like, come on, y'all. This come is come on now. Y'all wasting it. Wasting Silly it. shit. Wait, don't but anyhow, what what are you all doing to um to vote? And if you could, um, who are you not voting for? <laughs> 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 Tisha, you want me to start? Because I know you're going to go. I mean, you could go first. You know how right. I feel. I know how you go. All right. So I'm voting absentee. Well, hold on, wait a minute. Let me precursor. The, yeah. the views yeah. and opinions of the host of the Copa Rita <laughs> podcast are not necessarily those of the Ubiquitous Black Podcast. You better come on, disclaimer. <laughs> come on. Go, go ahead. Trump. I don't have time. You know I'm not voting for the damn Trump. I don't have the time. So, no, not Trump. I'm voting for Biden. I don't have any other choice. So I'm voting for Biden. Um, I'm going to vote absentee. And as far as coping, I plan to be ready for whatever. Like, I'm not going into this feeling or like it's a landslide for Biden because I don't feel like that at all. I'm not going into this feeling like Trump is going to willingly leave his post. I don't feel like that at all. I'm not going into this feeling like, you know, this is going to be the best four years for Black people. Nope, not at all. I'm just doing my civic duty. And that is to go and vote for the candidate that I feel is going to represent better for my people than the other candidate. Not great, but better. I said just answer the question. I didn't say campaign. God. Tisha, she acting like she on the ballot. Damn. Okay, <laughs> and I, I demand that you all go out and vote. Make your vo- okay, okay. Listen, because you know what? Honestly, <laughs> we plug voting on our show. We definitely plug that. We put it in our description box, like for the different states, for different people who are listening. You know, wherever in the country, like we plug that because it's like you know what? You can only do what you can do, but what you can do is do your part. You know what I'm saying? You can't control whatever's going on in Washington. You cannot control the DNC, the RNC. You you just can't. Like it's unfortunate, but you can't. All you can do is do your part and also prepare for the be prepared for the worst and be prepared for the best and just keep it moving. Stay on your post regardless. Stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready. You feel right? me? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> what about you, Tisha? What, what what are you doing and who are you not voting for? <laughs> okay, so I don't know about the young listeners out there, but um, there was a time called Y2K. And I remember when my what? parents like <laughs> had all the kids. Y2K. Y2K is right before we switched to the 2000s. It was 1999. Switch it in. And I think that this election year is going to be equivalent to that. I think we just need, as a community, need to be prepared. Make sure your water supply is updated. Like, get all your little bottled waters. Make sure your canned goods are good. If you believe in guns, maybe go out and get one. Um, And then, you know, once you get everything secure and solid in your household, uh, do do your civic duty, as Tara was talking about. Like, and go out to the polls and vote. Like, whether it's in person, early, early voting or whatever. I personally am. We got absentee, but I don't trust these people as far as I can just whatever. I don't trust them. So I decided not to do absentee. Um, and I looked up the the law behind that. And basically, you can even if you um, got an absentee ballot, you can still vote in person early. You just have to make sure you bring your absentee ballot with you so they can discard it. And if you don't have it with you, you can still vote early. You just can't vote the same like day of election day. That because then your vote is not going to count as accurate. See all the fucking technicalities. See, see right. that's, that's why you got to be prepared. That's the problem. Right? Voter yes. suppression. Real talk. That's the problem. Yeah. It's like, come on, it don't even take all that. Food. It's so stupid. Like, Dumb. but yeah. So yeah. if you did get your absentee ballot, but you still want to vote in person, um, you can still do that. You still have time. I'm going to do that. Just take your absentee ballot. Take a chair. Take some water. Bring a mask. Um, bring some and just snacks. Be- yeah, be prepared for foolery. And if you can't take the day off, try to when you're voting. Um, but like, it's trash that we have to deal with like the situation where you got to stay in long hours to go vote. Like, what is this, 2020? Like, for real? But whatever. Um, but like, the way that I'm coping with it is like Tira says, I'm not having any expectations. I'm making sure that I have like my stuff stocked up correctly. Um, I'm uh, subscribing to any mental health situations that I can. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't, 
I don't believe in the system, but I believe that we should show the system how flawed it is by going to vote. And whatever happens after we tell the people what we want and they still don't listen to us, that's on them. And that's on like the country, like after that. But in the meantime, let's just vote. Get it over with, guys. And do not vote for Kanye's bitch ass because I'm tired of the narrative <laughs> where, like, come on, man. Like, I'm just irritated because he can say whatever the hell he wants about black people and then turn about people like, oh, we still go vote for Kanye. But then no. let Megan Thee Stallion say, oh, Tory Lanez shot me in the fucking foot. What happens? But you know what? I'm oh, not going to go there. Man. I'm not going to go there. You, you already you, did. So I, 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 speak, <laughs> speaking of feet. <laughs> Speaking of speaking of foots and hooves. Oh Lord. Um, <laughs> okay. Um here's a, here's here's my take on because I, I will I'll touch this because I kind of had this within me, but do you all remember that book when you were growing up? Because I feel like I said we're all in the same age group. You remember that book when you were growing up? Um that was called If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes. And then he, you know. So basically, I have a, a story I wrote, a little you short a, story, if you will. Oh, sorry. A little ditty. A little ditty. Okay. It's like this. It goes like this. Let's go. <clears throat> if you give a Tory a hairline. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that the he's, whole story? <laughs> he's he's going to get a hold of a gun. <laughs> If you give him a gun, he is gonna not know how to shoot that motherfucking gun. <laughs> T Rod, T Rod, your show gonna get canceled after this. No, I won't. No, I won't. But no, no. Seriously though, I feel like he he um was really feeling himself after the hairline situation because nobody knew. And, and then he got, he, got he, he, he fucking flipped his leg. And he got the smash Meg. Who was yeah, the yeah. He wouldn't, he, wouldn't have did, he wouldn't have did that with a fuck. You don't have the same confidence with a fucked up it. hairline. You better say it. Come you on. I have that. You, can, you can't even talk. Him. Come on. Come man, on. listen. You can't he even talk, to, talk to a certain way with a certain. Man, listen. He would have never smashed <laughs> And you know what? On another level, and I don't know this woman person personally, but like I do know that she lost her mother last year, and I know that she lost her father, and she experienced a level of fame that she never experienced before. So I can't even imagine how that would feel. And then you meet someone who also lost their mother very recently, also yeah. experiencing a level of fame. Ooh, so like, that's a, that's, that's, that human experience uh-huh. where you just kind of have a tie or a connection with someone, toxic as it may be. You still have it because you're a human, and I feel yes. for her because I'm like, damn, she might have just been caught up in a moment. Whereas us regular folk who are not Meg Thee Stallion or not famous may have been able to have a situation with that someone like that, i.e., an entanglement, and it not be a whole thing, right? But Meg mm. is someone who's so visible to where, like, her entanglement, I'm air quoting. You know, <laughs> it is, <laughs> is, you know, much more publicized. And it's like, damn, she might not have been really be fucking with this nigga on a regular basis, but like, it's just a moment. You know what I'm saying? A, a, and that's a all it was supposed to be. Yeah. We, yeah, we weren't supposed moment. to know that they were even. Excuse yep. me. We weren't supposed to know they even knew each other. Nope. And but that being know. said, yep. that being said, we, we, we can see there is a way to kind of watch this, watch this, cope with it. <laughs> Come because on, because God. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, Megan um found a way to flip the narrative and make it work in her favor, and hopefully she's you know healing both physically mm-hmm. and mentally. <laughs> I quit, I quit, I quit, I quit, I quit, I quit. Yeah. But no, um, mm-hmm. honestly though, I really think that um, it's just a, it's just a, it really how that whole situation is basically twenty twenty for us. It really it, it, that whole situation is basically 2020. We all have been, in one way or the other, shot in the foot by some shit that we trusted. The system is um, exposing itself. We all had a quarantine happen. We had things that have had time to sort of unravel. And now mm-hmm. we're all just figuring out how to cope with it. And mm-hmm. hopefully now we can um, do a lot of coping and a lot of figuring out the next thing with you all. On your on your podcast, you see what I did there. Yeah, we <laughs> love it. <laughs> we, we appreciate you. So we yeah. come to the end here. We'll start, Tisha. If you could, 
tell the people where they can find you personally. And then, Tierra, you do the same. And then you tell people where they can find the podcast. Go ahead. Well, you can find me at um, on Twitter at... Oh, never mind. Don't I'm not going to tell people where they can find me. <laughs> I have my whole government name on Twitter. Uh, but you can find me on Coping With It, the podcast, um, anywhere that you guys listen to podcasts, whether it's Spotify, Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts, or whatever. The, the podcast is called Coping With It. So... Yeah, Tierra. absolutely. Like Tisha said, you can find us at Coping With It Pod. Um, that's on Instagram and Twitter if you want to check out our show. Um, if you want to look for our show, it's just called Coping With It. So Coping, C-O-P-I-N-G, with W-I-T-H, it, I-T. And then if you want to find me personally, I'm It's Tierra Janae on Instagram and Twitter. And also it's tierrajanae.com. We would love for you to follow us and keep in touch and check out our show. Reach out. Let us know how you've been coping with it. We'd love to hear from you. Most definitely. And I definitely appreciate you all taking your time out to come on here and talk our shit. <laughs> yeah, thanks for It was fun. I had, a, I had a blast. I had a yeah. blast. <laughs> we, did too, we did too Tiran we appreciate you so much you're such a gem thank you so much for reaching out and sharing us with your audience your ubiquitous blacks we appreciate you all so yeah and then of course you're going to come on our show at some point yes 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 on the spot yeah yeah You since you did it okay. there then I'll have to say yes and as of course um, as you all know this is the Ubiquitous Box Podcast. I appreciate you holding on with me and hanging in there for this ride here. And hopefully you enjoyed our guest today. Now, um, if you want to find the podcast, of course, you can find us on social media at Ubiquitous Blacks. If you don't know how to spell it, when you put it in Google, it will say, hey, did you mean? And you'll get it. Your, I promise it'll come up. And if you would like, you can find us on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that stuff. If you can, leave us a rating and a review. Now, when you go to leave a review, it's going to give you an option to get some stars there. Do me a favor. Leave five of them. If you feel if you feel even an inkling in yourself to leave less than five, leave that shit to yourself. I don't want it. And for those of you who want to send in questions or have any queries, anything that it could be, you can always contact us with, um, at ubiquitousblacks at gmail.com. And that's it. So whether you are black in Washington, D.C. Or black in Ohio. Or black in Long Island. Remember, we are black. Say it with me. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Get out of here. We got to go. <laughs>